Ersin Tata is the newly appointed president for the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. It means he's now the chief negotiator for the country on the Cyprus issue. His plan is to push for a two-state solution. He's also concerned that Northern Cyprus may not get its fair share of hydrocarbons discovered in the Eastern Mediterranean. And he's on a mission to boost his country's economy. I'm Shamim Chowdhury and I spoke to Ersin Tata one-on-one. -on -one. President Ersin Tata, first of all, congratulations on your election win. Uh, it is an election that uh, was won largely, or at least in part, on the message that you will seek closer ties with Turkey. Why is this so important? Because uh, uh, for the last 50 years, we have been negotiating with our neighbours in the South Greek Cypriots for a settlement of the Cyprus problem on the basis of a federal solution. However, uh, we think that it's about time that we change uh, the structure of the negotiations to a, a more of a two-state solution. Because what the Greek Cypriots insist about a federal solution is basically a unitary state, whereby the majority, the Greek Cypriots, will rule, rule the minority Turkish Cypriots. This is something that uh, we, the Turkish Cypriots, don't want to see after 50 years of separation. Uh, after 1974, as you might know, uh, Greek Cypriots have moved down to the south, Turkish Cypriots moved to the north. Therefore, the real status in Cyprus is basically two states. A state is down in the south, a state is in the north. Our state in the north is Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. So. Uh, after I won the election, I started to voice uh, that the expectation is basically, after all the, these years, two states living side by side in peace uh, and uh, stability. Uh, otherwise, uh, we will still be involved in fruitless talks. I underline and uh, once more reiterate, uh, fruitless talks, uh, spending a lot of time on uh, negotiation tables, uh, basically, Achieving nothing, as has been proved last in Kranz Montana in 2017. Uh, it was very close to a settlement, but uh, near the end, the Greek Cypriots backed out, and Anastasia is the current president. He returned back to Cyprus, and the speculation was that if he had gone into an agreement, he would have lost the forthcoming elections, uh, which is, was right, because he won the elections on the basis that uh, he pronounced later on basically uh, claiming victory because he, after all these years, managed to get Turkey's guarantorship rights on the negotiating table for the first time. In other words, to negotiate how and when Turkey would withdraw or Tur Turkey would give up her guarantee rights in Cyprus or over Cyprus, which is unacceptable to the Turkish Cypriots. And the other thing that he said to celebrate was receiving a map from the Turkish Cypriots, from Akinci. Uh, what I'm basically coming to is that uh, a solution based on a federal structure has proved fruitless for the last 50 years, and therefore it does not give any hope, a realistic hope. Therefore, my uh, main vision, and I share this with Turkey, and Turkey uh, adamantly supports me on this issue is basically two states solution in Cyprus, these states living side by side. So you believe that improving your relations with Turkey, making your relations with Turkey even closer than they already are, will uh, help towards achieving this two-state two solution course, that you are seeking? We, we need Turkish help to negotiate all this in the negotiating table with uh, the Greek Cypriots, uh, Greece, and the other guarantor power, United Kingdom, and the United Nations, and the Europeans at large, we need Turkish support. Turkey is uh, the leading country in this region, as you would know. And because we have a lot of developments in the Eastern Mediterranean with regard to petrol, gas, heat, carbon, uh, drilling rights, and all the rest of it associated with this, uh, Turkey uh, is more and more interested in the Eastern Mediterranean and in Cyprus. Because when you look at the map, 
Turkey is the leading and the biggest country in the region with 1,800 kilometers of coastline to the eastern Mediterranean, which gives her a lot of rights as far as the drilling and other uh, uh, attributes in the region. So I will ask you a little bit more about the eastern Mediterranean issue uh, in a while, but I just want to uh, expand on the Cyprus issue for the moment. Now, you said that one of the conditions for uh, progressing with the talks uh, as set by the Greek Cypriots was that Turkey would no longer be a guarantor, and you said that that was uh, unacceptable. unacceptable. You, yes, unacceptable. Categorically unacceptable. And yet you are... Uh, tightening your relationships with Turkey in order to move the Cyprus issue forward. So can you see that there may be uh, a profound, there is a profound difference of opinion here. How can you meet halfway? There is no difference of opinion. As far as the Cyprus problem and the, our approach to it, to it uh, as I've been saying, a two-state solution. We are 100% of the same opinion with Turkey at the moment. Uh, my government and as a president my view and what I've been putting uh, during my campaign it basically overlaps 100% with Turkey's position which is very comforting to us because my policy is basically to act in, uh, in liaison with Turkey because Turkey is our supporter Turkey is the only country that is recognizing so far the Turkish civil state Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, and is the only country that gives us financial support so that we can uh, run our affairs and keep our state uh, alive and uh, standing. Therefore, we are very grateful to Turkey for, for many, many years. And now, uh, with regard to these exploration rights in the Eastern Mediterranean, we are acting together. Therefore, there is no problem with regard to our relationship with Turkey. However, we have some opponents in Cyprus, political opponents, who think otherwise. They still think that uh, federation is the only way forward. They think that we should have a limited uh, relationship with Turkey. They, w they don't want uh, a proximity as far as the relationship is concerned because they are of the view that uh, Turkey imposes some of the uh, decisions taken by the Turkish civil government. And Turkish people, people. My view is that Turkey doesn't impose. It's what we need and what we have to do that Turkey proposes that we do from time to time. Turkey is always uh, favoring us because politically recognizing us is not an easy issue in the world because Turkey has had a lot of headache because they have been recognizing uh, Turkish people state, Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus for many years. and. Uh, is, uh, giving support to the Turkish Cypriots is obviously financially very expensive. But Turkey has been doing this for years because we are part of the same nation. Now, if we are to see a solution on the Cyprus issue, it would, of course, have to be recognized by the international bodies, primarily the United Nations. But you have rejected uh, the United Nations uh, bicommunal solution. Um, and you are due to meet the, the Greek Cypriot uh, president uh, next month, I understand. What are you going to say to him? I'm going to tell him that basically the whole uh, federation game is over because he knows very well why it's all over. Because Greek Cypriots have never been able to share or express an intention to share uh, authority and wealth with the Turkish Cypriots. They see themselves as the majority and the majority will rule the minority and therefore on many important issues it is what the majority says that counts and the Turkish Cypriots, the minority, will just have to see and watch what they decide and how they allocate resources. Therefore, this is our uh, message this is our uh, view. We are acting together with Turkey. Therefore, a solution in Cyprus should be based on the facts of Cyprus. The facts are that we still have, we, we, we currently have two states. One is in the south, one is in the north. And the, Turkey, the, the, the world community should respect this. Uh, what we want is basically the recognition of the status quo, the recognition of what is happening in Cyprus after 
46 years after 1974, no power in the world will be able to change what is now in Cyprus. It's a very, very uh, old story. Since 1974, we have had 46 years, another four years gone, and it will be half a century. After half a century, it's very, very difficult to change uh, the, the status of the current situation. But it's not just the Greek Cypriots that you have to convince. You have to convince the United Nations as well. A two-state solution is not part of the UN-sponsored uh, well, talks. Not, it's not part of, their, of, of the UN agenda. So how, how do you plan to change that? If they're realistic, they know that for the last 50 years, nothing has been achieved. And there's no point in continuing if we know up front from the beginning that nothing will be achieved. There was the point of spending so much time with a fruitless exercise. Therefore, it's about time that we all wake up to the reality. And uh, yesterday, there's a paper in Cyprus called Sunday May. It was all in there. A lot of articles about the latest situation with regard to the Cyprus problem. And they've all been saying that basically a two-state solution is the only way forward. Because federation that we challenged for so many years has brought nothing, was able to bring nothing because the Greek Cypriots don't want to share authority and wealth of the island with the, with the Turkish Cypriots. It's as simple as that. And nothing will be able to change that. Therefore, what's the point of still insisting that we talk about federation after 50 years when nothing has been achieved so far? Well, as you say, it's been 46 years and nothing has been, the status quo has remained the same. But do you feel optimistic that at some point you will achieve your goal of a, of a two-state uh, island. Well, it, we have two states on the island now. This is my greatest asset. What I've been telling you is that we have uh, uh, the facts of the island. Yes, is what I'm one, telling one, you. One part is only recognized by Turkey alone, though. But uh, th 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 what is recognition? We have mo from more than 100 countries students studying in our universities. We trade with more than 100 countries, uh, sending goods, importing goods, uh, payments happening through the banking system. Therefore, these are all, in fact, uh, facts of life that amounts to kind of recognition, indirect recognition. If they don't recognize us, they won't trade with us. If they don't recognize, they will not allow their students to come and study in our universities. And then those guys receiving our diplomas, diplomas or our universities, and they get jobs in their country with the diplomas they taken from our universities in the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. Therefore, it's a long struggle, but we have to keep fighting because we have no other way. We have no other way. We will not and never uh, go into a solution with the Greek Cypriots when we will lose our state and we will be a minority under the majority. And in the long run, that will amount to Cyprus becoming another Crete. When in Crete, all Turks left the island because they couldn't continue living with, with the Greeks. And then uh, after so many years, we have uh, Crete as a Greek island. That is not something that we would uh, allow in any condition whatsoever in Cyprus. Uh, you mentioned the uh, hydrocarbons, rights to the hydrocarbons in the Eastern Mediterranean. How realistic is it to expect um, your share of those resources when you are not I appreciate what you're saying that informally you are recognized and have been for many, many years. But the fact remains that formally the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus is officially not recognized as a sovereign state. So how do you think it's realistic to expect what you believe to be your rightful shares of the uh, hydrocarbons uh, in the eastern Mediterranean when there is no formal recognition of your country? Well, basically it's a long struggle. There might not be uh, worldwide recognition, but what is important to us more than anything else, Turkish recognition. Turkish government recognizes us. This recognition is very important because it's opening our way and gates to the international uh, world, to the international community. That recognition that you have been talking about is something that will, we believe come in time. So long as we uh, keep uh, our state alive and uh, prospering. 
On the, just, just sticking for a moment on the uh, subject of the hydrocarbons in the Eastern Mediterranean, you have said that any agreement signed by Greece will require the approval of Turkish Cypriots. Now, so does that mean that you believe that Greece has been acting unlawfully? Greece, uh, unful, uh, unlawfully, sh sh because as far as the Cypriot constitution is concerned, Unless two guarantor powers, Greece and Turkey, together join a bloc, European community, then uh, Cyprus will not be able to join because Turkey at the moment is not a member of the European community. However, Greece is. Therefore, Cyprus will be on its own becoming a member of Europe uh, was uh, violating the constitution of Cyprus, as I've been telling you. Because unless Turkey and Greece together are members of the European Community, uh, Cyprus shouldn't have joined. Therefore, they have acted illegally, unlawfully. But uh, nothing has stopped them, and they've gone ahead. Because unfortunately, in the world, uh, it's a power game. Sometimes you are uh, right. It is uh, what you have to say that should happen. But it doesn't because the other guys are more powerful than you are. And in this case, this is what happened, because Turkish Cypriots hasn't got the power. They have abused the situation and they have got the Greek Cypriots into the European bloc uh, before a final agreement in the Cyprus problem. Therefore, this by itself makes the solution of the Cyprus problem much more difficult, because one side is uh, basically a European member of the European Union, and we, the Turkish Cypriots, are outside that, and the only country that recognizes us is Turkey, and uh, they uh, veto uh, our recognition of the other countries because they have this veto right, because they are uh, uh, the only recognized part of uh, Cyprus, Cyprus government, the, the, the state in the south, which is very unfortunate, unfortunate on our behalf. I just want to move on now to uh, international trade. Now, you said that you have many, many countries uh, trading with you, despite the fact that you are not officially recognized as a sovereign state. Um, can you tell me what these countries are? How do you trade? And how, now that you have been appointed president of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, how do you plan to strengthen those trade ties? Basically, we have a lot of imports from all over the world, including the United Kingdom, European countries, China, uh, United States, but mainly from Turkey, obviously, because we are very close and uh, it doesn't take very long to get to our ports in Famagusta and Kairina. Uh, basically, uh, trade is something which is based on interest. If they are able to sell and get their money, they go ahead with it. They don't look at recognition, diplomatic recognition. They just care about uh, if they're if they're going to sell their goods or not. Uh, of course. Therefore, uh, within time, Turkish Cypriots and Turkish Cypriot State, no, uh, Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, because it's been trading with so many countries over the years and still developing these things, that is a way to the international recognition that we aspire for. Uh, because it's all based on economics, money flows, and other interests. That's a factor of life. So is this something you're planning to bolster? Is this part of your agenda? Our to uh, mission is basically to strengthen the Turkish Cypriot economy. A strengthened Turkish Cypriot economy would obviously get our population, Turkish Cypriots, to aspire for a more honorable solution. If your economy is not so strong, then you, in fact, uh, can ask for a less viable solution which is uh, unacceptable. But however, because you have uh, a lot of pressure from the people, uh, they, uh, everybody wants more wealth, everybody wants welfare, everybody wants better living, they pressure you for a solution. And our responsibility is basically to refrain that. To refrain that because once you let it go, you can never get it back. Because sovereignty and national pride and national expectations and national vision uh, is very important for a nation like uh, Turkey and Turkish Cypriots. This is something that we've been uh, uh, 
uh, fighting for, for, for many years, the Turkish Cypriot cause in Cyprus. Therefore, we have to, at the end of the day, have an honorable solution. I am uh, very keen on an honorable solution. Uh, otherwise, our national uh, uh, pride will uh, get damaged. What about your own citizens? Now, as, as uh, president, you have pledged that you will focus on improving the economic and social conditions of uh, Turkish Cypriots. Um, how, how are you going to go about doing that? How will you implement? What are your plans and because how will you implement we them? We need, therefore, uh, that stability and basically good governance and with Turkish help because uh, not only Turkish financial help from government to government, but also uh, our uh, tourists are mainly from Turkey. Our students in our universities are mainly from Turkey. A lot of uh, other benefits come from Turkey, a lot of business from Turkey. Therefore, good relationship with the Turkish Cypriots and the Turkish people by and large, uh, because Turkey is uh, 80 plus million people. If we can get our uh, suitless food sell to Turkey, our other agricultural produce. And if you get tourists and students from Turkey, that means if you have good relationship with Turkey, we can get good terms of trade, and that will improve the welfare of the Turkish Cypriots. Because to trade with other countries far away is more costly, more difficult, and more demanding. However, with Turkey, everything is uh, much easier. And since now that I've been elected, as the president of the Turkish Republic of Cyprus, and because I have good relationship with Erdogan government and other people, with the uh, Turkish people by and large, uh, I think in the last in the f five years I had, we will have good opportunities to improve the welfare of the Turkish Cypriots. I hope. As you say, Turkey has supported you on so many crucial issues and most recently on uh, your decision to reopen the coastal town of Marash. I mean, do you think you would have been able to do that without Turkey's help? Well, basically, it would have been much more difficult because at the end of the day, you have the United Nations and you have other countries that might give you problems. But if you feel that Turkey, uh, Turkish Republic is after you, obviously that makes your life easier. And in this respect, obviously, we consulted with the Turkish government, with President Erdogan, and they basically, after uh, evaluating the issue, they said, uh, go ahead. And, and uh, here we are at the moment, uh, Varosha being opened up. And finally, I do want to ask you about um, Turkish Cypriots living abroad. You spent a lot of time in the UK, so you, you studied there at Cambridge University and later on for PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, so you will know that there's a very large Turkish uh, Cypriot community in the UK, as there is in uh, Turkey. And you have said that you want to strengthen uh, those ties with Turkish Cypriots um, living elsewhere. Why is this so because, important? Because uh, we basically are uh, of the opinion that the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus or the Turkish state in the north gets stronger. For it to get stronger, obviously we have to have economic support and other uh, uh, welfare. To be able to do this, we need uh, population. Uh, unless you have uh, the right population and the population structure, it's very difficult to get the right sectors to get uh, the, the required growth. Therefore, it's my uh, view and vision to be able to pull a lot of Turkish Cypriots from other parts of the world, including England and Turkey, to come back to uh, North Cyprus because North Cyprus, especially after this pandemic, uh, Corona, uh, which we think we have managed very uh, successfully. Uh, this would, uh, within a few years, show itself in the prosperity of our main sectors, universities, tourism, other uh, uh, agricultural sector, and other uh, produce by and large. Therefore, we will, ne we will need uh, good people in the north in uh, a lot of sectors with a lot of experience. We have a lot of experienced people in many institutions around the world and we have been getting uh, quite a number of them coming back to Cyprus to teach at our universities to work in the tourism sector and other uh, services. 
Therefore, uh, with the growth that we aspire and we expect, we need the right number of Turkish Cypriots to come back to their homeland. And by and large, the contacts that I've been making is that most of them would like to come back. For example, I have a school friend called Dr. Professor Dr. Erol Baysal in Dubai. He's a professor working with Corona at the moment. And he messaged me today saying that, Ersin, uh, now that you are elected the president, I've decided with my family we are moving back to Cyprus. This is just an example uh, of today, which made me very happy. Uh, president Ersin Tata, thank you very much for talking to TRT thank World. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.